Have you ever wondered why you'd need a web presenter when you're running vMix? We're about to find out. Hi, I'm Matthew from Video Team, and today I'm going to look at the web presenter HD and how I've got it connected using vMix and why I've got it connected using vMix. In full disclosure, none of the equipment that I'm going through today has been supported or provided to me by any of the manufacturers and vmix is a purchase copy that i'm using it has not been supplied by vmix themselves this is not being underwritten by any of those manufacturers or software providers okay well on to onto the connection and why i've done it now in the past few weeks i've had some cpu overhead issues and gpu overhead issues with my laptop now it is an HP ZBook G4. It's running two terabytes of SSD and it's got 56 gig of RAM. So it's got enough to do what we need to do. However, it keeps peaking out. Now, generally it was sitting around about the 55 to 60 mark with CPU usage. Now that's not too bad itself. However, when something happens, um, uh, a function starts in the background on the laptop all of a sudden that CPU usage starts to peak and in some cases with the GPU usage it gets out to the point where it's overloaded so I wanted to try and figure out how I could reduce that and still maintain the quality of video presentation that my users and watchers have been used to okay so in comes the uh, Blackmagic design web presenter HD now I could have got 4k um, for just a little bit more but I didn't need it everything that is coming out on the video is coming out in HD 1080 and we're using 25 frames so 1080 25 now as you know with the web presenter HD it only takes input through SDI black magic design if you're watching this come on Let's review it and give me an HDMI input as well as an HDMI output. So in the picture of things, I need something else to be able to convert from HDMI to SDI. And I just happen to have something lying around. There we go. The Decimator MDLX. Fantastic little device. And it takes your HDMI signal up to 1080p60 and outputs SDI. Um, I'm not reviewing this product today however it is fantastic you can change using the software um, the outputs you can loop out you can double out you can do all sorts of things um, and it's also bi-directional so you can have HDMI input output um, and at the same time you can use the SDI input output as well so fantastic little device. So anyway we're taking that HDMI and we're converting it to SDI and then we're going to put it into our web presenter. There we go. It's now in the web presenter and we can see the picture. You can see my see my little brick there and the HD web presenter is on the top. Underneath that I've got the Ultra Studio H, uh, HD and that's just for the video camera that's sitting behind me that's doing my wide angle. But that's another story. So why did I go for this as opposed to any other options that I could have gone for? Well, after reviewing some of the videos that are on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, um, it has some really good features. Now, um, have a look at those features. There's lots and lots of um, videos that you can find. I'll put some links down below. But primarily, it does all the overhead that the computer would have done. Uh, if my graphics was putting out 1080p25 and I wanted to put out a 720 stream, then I can do that change in the WebPresenter HD without taxing the computer uh, with some external calculations. Now at the moment, if I look down here, my CPU usage is 28%. Now that CPU usage wouldn't change if I hit the on-air key because it's not related to the laptop. It's taken it one step away from the laptop. Now the other thing is, if I decided that I wanted redundancy, I could run a second computer and put an HD, HDMI switch in there and we could actually have some form of redundancy. 
I'm not going to go into that, but it is another option. It's another good setup that we could do. Now, again, it's a great little little tool for, for what we're doing here. And what we've got, again, let's go to the wide angle picture so we can have a better look at the setup. So here we go. You've got the uh, Representer HD sitting on the brick here. And then over here, I've got an external output on another 7-inch screen. This is a much must HD screen. It's not a recording screen, it's just a display screen. But it gives me a bigger picture of all of the figures that we're looking at. Um, you know, whether, whether we're live, um, what our video input status is, what our stream status is, our audio status, and what our cache is, which is really important if you're using an internet connection that's a little bit marginal perhaps not a fiber connection, maybe it's an ADSL connection, and the data rate's a bit lower. And of course, there's a cache button here as well. Now, in the last stream that I did, the cache got up to 3%, which is really nothing in the bigger, bigger picture. Okay, so again, this screen here, the seven inch screen, is about the same size as my output screen on the, uh, the vMix. Now, it's very straightforward. And it really is one button click. And you're used to that because in vMix, down in the bottom of your screen, in the middle here, you've got a stream button. Now you might have it set to your uh, stream deck or your hotkeys so that you can do it. But either way, it's one button and it clicks. It sends the data off to YouTube. Now in the same way, the, the web presenter itself has also got that one button. So here we go, we've got an on-air button. I click that and it's sending data to YouTube. Easy. Now if you've got YouTube set to, to, uh, to receive the data and automatically switch on, then it'll automatically set your live stream live. Remember, there's always two parts to a live stream. The first part of your live stream is when you send it to, to your provider. Whether that's YouTube, whether that's Facebook, whatever it may be, that is the first part of the stream. Then the second part of the stream is when you set that stream live through your provider. Now, again, I'm using, uh, uh, there we go. I'm using uh, YouTube primarily for streaming. So I'll send that to YouTube. Now, I haven't got it set to automatically start that live stream when it receives data because I want to be able to check to make sure that my data is coming through and it's clear and it's at the right frame rate and there's no issues with bitrate, etc. So once, I, once I've got that clean stream and I know I'm ready to go, then I can hit the go live button on YouTube and then it will send it all, all live. So would I recommend this product to anyone else? Now if you're doing what I'm doing and you're streaming and you're working on a little bit of a budget and you're just trying to make sure that you get the maximum quality for the amount of work and input that you're doing and your laptop's doing, then I certainly would recommend it. Now I'm using a laptop primarily for the functions of streaming through vMix and I think vMix talks really well to the Web Presenter HD. It communicates through the HDMI port, I'm getting the sound and the video coming out through the HDMI port and at a glance I can see on my web presenter or on my external screen that that data is um, clean, clear, concise. I'm not getting, uh, I'm not overblowing the uh, audio outputs and I can, again I can monitor it, monitor it and make any changes that I need to on the, on the laptop, on the, um, uh, on, the, on the sound mixer through vMix uh, as I need to. So yeah, would I recommend it? Yeah, I would. Even if you're only using one of the um, devices such as the uh, mini ATMs uh, and putting that out into, into the Web Presenter HD. Um, because again, you've got a better level of control over what you're seeing and what's, what's happening. As far as vMix goes, communicating to the Web Presenter HD, as I said before, I love it. It's just reduced my overhead by 20 to 50 percent and it's making it clean, clear, concise and so easy to use. So if you found this video useful, please hit the like and feel free to put a comment down there. 
and subscribe to the channel. There's more videos on the channel and there'll be more coming up as I review and show you different products that I work with in my day-to-day -day present presentations and my day-to-day -day web streaming. I'm Matthew, this is Video Scene, thanks for watching.